What's up guys, welcome back to Travel Back to another video. And in today's video guys, we're gonna be finally trying to paint this engine bay, getting this engine bay fully ready so we can start taking things off the E90 M3 and start transferring it onto our E91 M3. I really wanna get this thing as a run and drive as soon as possible. But first things first, um, we need to start working on this engine bay. That being said guys, I went to my local paint shop and uh, this is a bunch of stuff that they actually had. Um, I had I made a couple mistakes, but uh, not too big of mistakes, <laughs> thank the Lord. First being, and the major one is the paint. So I ended up getting the proper paint. This is Lime Rock paint. So yeah, guys, here's a surprise. We ended up going with Lime Rock paint. For those of you guys who don't know what Lime Rock paints, which I don't think there's much people that don't, that's a BMW enthusiast. Lime Rock paint, there's only 200, I don't know, I have three fingers up, 200 of them released ever in the world for the E92 chassis. And it was only for the E92 chassis. And it was only for the year 2013. So you had to have a 2013 Lime Rock edition, which is only 200 in the world. It had like a custom interior. I believe a custom interior, like custom steering wheel, um, or like an M performance interior, only like black guts. And I believe they only came in DCT. So they're like a very, very specific package and they have custom badges and things like that. And they're very, very, very sought out for like one just went out at an auction. Yeah, it only had 200 miles on it, but one went out at an auction recently for $260,000. That just really comes to show you guys how much this color is really loved. And it is a car I personally have always wanted for an E92 M3. I just couldn't even find one that's reasonably priced because all of them are like more than double or triple a normal E92 M3 with similar miles. And I couldn't really justify just prior primarily for the paint color. So that being said, I'm gonna be doing some custom things to this car to make it the ultimate Lime Rock edition, which is definitely gonna make it a one of one. I know there's some other people out there that built E91 M3s, but not with the engine swaps, like just the body. I know there's like one or two people that actually done the entire conversion with the engine and everything, um, but I think they use the standard chassis color. And I've never actually seen one that has an individual color, let alone this color that is so sought out for by almost every BMW owner. So yeah, guys, so that's the news. We're gonna be building an E91 Lime Rock Edition wagon, which I think is gonna be pretty insane because that that is a definitely a one of one car. And if we actually get that Lime Rock sticker, because I don't know if you guys know, but there's a Lime Rock sticker gets stuck in the side of the window for the E92 coupes. I believe it goes somewhere along the lines of like Lime Rock Park Edition uh, M3 coupe. We're gonna put M3 wagon. <laughs> I think it's gonna be super, super, super sick. And there's a few other little detail points I wanna do to this car to make it a Lime Rock Edition, but I'm gonna have it to where it says somewhere on the car made by yours truly, because this is not made by BMW, this is made by your boy, and uh, obviously, because BMW never made an E91 M3. So anyways, that is the exciting news about the paint color. I'm very, very, very happy with this, and I'm very excited for it. And uh, so yeah, the mess up was, I got this can first, which came with clear coat and paint. This one's just paint. I actually called the man, the myth, the legend, V-Tune. He recommended that I don't actually use the paint in clear. It's just not gonna have a nicer finish, and if there's any mess ups, it's hard to go back and fix this. Rather than just paint, we can easily fix it and then put some clear on top of it. This setup right here was just $100 alone for just these four cans, which is crazy. Um, these ones are actually cheaper. I don't know if you mix up clear, I guess it ends up being a little bit cheaper. But also I heard this is the good clear coat with hardener in the can as well. So yeah, this is gonna be, so yeah, this is pretty much the best of the best setup you can possibly get for cans. And I'm hoping this is gonna come out A1. Now we did get some scuff pads because the engine bay is pretty much painted. We don't really need to use primer. Primer, you normally use it on stuff that doesn't have any paint like this section right here, if you really wanted to paint that perfectly. But for the most part, as long as we scuff down this engine bay, degrease it, we could just use a harder scuff pad, the red ones, and then the black scuff pads. And then after the black scuff pads, we're gonna be using a 400 grit sandpaper and then a 600 grit sandpaper. And then that should pretty much get it fully smoothed down to actually start doing the painting process. Painting is the most exciting thing, but just like any job, the primary thing is prep. So that is our main mission with this engine bay. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and just degrease the entire engine bay. You guys saw in the last video, we just kind of washed it off. Now we need to degrease it. Once we get everything degreased, we can start the sanding. All right guys, so something I'm realizing as I'm degreasing this entire area, we're gonna want this entire side painted as well, the back side. And I don't wanna paint this side and then paint this side because then the splash should go onto this side. I'd rather paint the inner wheel well first. So any splash that goes onto this side, we can end up sanding it down and then spray it from this angle because this is obviously the primary area. If there's a little bit of overspray that comes up back here, as long as this side is painted first, we're not gonna have any overspray in the engine bay because that's, that's gonna be the primary thing people are gonna be looking at when you open up the engine bay. So that being said, we're gonna have to 
drop this self frame. I think the only thing that's pretty much holding it on is gonna be the three bolts up here, the three bolts up here, and that will also allow us to paint underneath that. And then obviously the self frame bolts and this whole thing should just pretty much drop down. So uh, yeah, looks like we are gonna have to do a little bit more mechanical stuff. But once we actually drop all the suspension, we're gonna have literally full access to the front end of this car. And guys, after removing the subframe, we honestly have so much space now. We can actually move inside the engine bay, actually sand it down so much easier instead of trying to reach over. And uh, we can easily paint all this stuff now. We even got the bolts out of the strut over here. So we can actually get all this sanded down properly and get this all painted properly. Um, I might actually remove this bracket as well. I think it's held on by three bolts and this whole bracket comes off. We'll paint that off separately as well. But yeah, now that the subframe is also gone, this entire uh, wheel well will be so much easier to paint. As you guys can see, this part is glossy. The rest of this is kind of like whatever. Um, so I'm I'm gonna try to get this all sanded down properly, uh, but it doesn't look like this needs to be absolutely perfect. It just this section right over here. But you guys know our goal is to try to get this thing as perfect as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these brackets as well on both sides. Just pretty much remove anything else like this little guy right over here. And like I said earlier, guys, we're just gonna go ahead and get started with the wheel wells first. So any paint that goes in the other way, we can just go ahead and sand down and make the engine bay absolutely perfect. And just like that, guys, we have all this section degreased, this entire section degreased. We have that section degreased, just this little uh, puddle of dirt over there that I need to get out. But other than that, this entire section is degreased. As you guys can see, it looks so, so, so good. Definitely happy that I removed this stuff for it made life a whole lot easier. So now the final part that we need to degrease is this whole section back here. So once we actually degrease all of this, we can finally start doing the scuffing process. All right, guys, so it's time for the scuffing process. We're gonna go ahead and use the red scuff pad. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and use the black scuff pad. And now that we're done with the scuff pads, I'm gonna go ahead and use the 400 grit. And now we're gonna go ahead and use 600 grit. Let's just go ahead and dab all this with some alcohol, just clean it all up, make sure the surface is perfectly clean, and then start laying down some coats of paint. All right, guys, moment of truth. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. And guys, about an hour and a half later, <laughs> We finally finished our first section. And unfortunately, it cost me two cans. I'm learning what paint thinner is. I'm learning what paint is. Um, I'm learning the steps and that's what's important. As you're painting, you learn what's important. You learn what's not important. And then eventually I'm gonna start getting into the paint guns. Um, and that's when I'm gonna start doing panels. This is why I'm actually just using cans for like the wheel arches and probably like the, the under paneling right here and like this section right here because it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't matter if it has a little bit of fish eye. But as for this section, guys, I'm really digging it. It looks super, super, super good. It just needs right now to dry off. It actually took me two cans just to do this section right now. And that might be a little overkill considering these are $28 a can. I'm gonna try to call them up and see if I can get four cans um, or six cans for about $20 a piece. So I can knock out two cans for this one, two cans for right over there, two cans right over here. So we have all the wheel arches pretty much complete. I do have two cans um, for the engine bay, which I don't know if that's gonna be enough just considering how big this area is. I might try to get two more cans for the engine bay. So four cans in total for the engine bay now this is probably going to cost me roughly that's what what is that like 50 um 100 200 probably like three to four hundred dollars to do this all with a paint can and uh, these little detail sections you're really not going to see but it's just the details that matter because once you remove a panel or for example you're taking off a wheel you don't want to see grade it just doesn't look good at all it just looks like this car has been painted before and we want this car to look like this was the factory paint at least for our personal satisfaction so anyways this came out really 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 good i'm really happy with this so that is the first section it's a hundred percent complete this was mixed clear coat and paint and i can see why clear coat and paint is not a good idea there's a lot of fish 
try right over here. But considering, again, this is the wheel liner, the wheel area, as long as it's the same color, that's all that matters. So all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead, head down to the paint place and uh, pick up another $200 or $300 worth of cans um, so we can 100% get the painting stuff done. So again, we can, we can start working on the M3 and start transferring over the wires and everything. Now I know guys probably getting a paint gun and a compressor and everything, it's that one time fee of like maybe like four or $500 for a decent setup. And uh, you know, we could paint as much cars as we can with a lot cheaper material cost because paint in a gallon would be maybe like 60, 70, maybe a hundred dollars or something like that, rather than buying it by the can, which gets really 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 expensive just because of how easy it is to actually use but also because i've never done this before with a paint match can i really 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 want to see the results when we do the wheel arches all with paint cans and then all the panels the quarter panel the hood the roof everything with a paint gun at a professional shop i want to see how close the color is so i know is paint cans really worth it from here on out this is kind of an experiment if you guys are wondering i'm wondering too so let's head down and pick up the rest of those cans Now that we have the goods, guys, let's go ahead and head home and uh, paint the rest of this thing. I'm so excited because, again, once we get all this stuff painted, it's time for the assembly of the E91 M3. And it can actually be called the E91 M3 because we're going to actually start assembling. I'm so stoked. And, guys, let me know down below if I chose the right color. But imagine a Lime Rock, one of one in the world, E91 M3. I have never seen a Lime Rock. If you literally type in just a Lime Rock, I don't even think I've seen anyone even paint an E90 M3 in Lime Rock or a, or a convertible or anything. So, I think it'd just be absolutely insane. It's unfortunate, it looks like we did hit rush hour. Let's head home and just continue more sanding. I'll catch y'all when I get there, probably like, honestly, 45 minutes, unfortunately. And just like that, guys, we knocked out the passenger, I mean, actually the driver's side wheel well. So now you have both wheel wells done, I could honestly start sanding down this section, but, but since the paint is still fresh on this side, I don't want any like dust and stuff like that hitting that paint. Uh, so in the meantime, we do need to actually remove the rear subframe, mainly because we need to relocate the DMTL pumps. We can actually put the M3 exhaust. And at the same time, we need to obviously get rid of the suspension because we won't put the M3 suspension. We want this thing literally, like as you guys can see, it's completely stripped front end, like literally everything. We want everything from the M3 to go onto this car. So uh, yeah, I guess the goal is right now, I'm gonna try to drop it little by little. It is a a little bit sketchy right now because all the weight is in the back of the car this thing's not even sitting on there so i'm gonna probably take my time trying to lower this so that i can actually start working on uh releasing this rear subframe And guys, about a day later, we pretty much got everything disconnected. We had the brake lines disconnected, the e-brake disconnected. I mean, at this point, we could pretty much just drop the subframe. I was gonna do it last night, but then uh, I don't know what happened with the quick jacks. I think all the weight set on these two wheels, and then one of the quick jacks failed, and the car literally almost slid into the fence. And we would have we would have had to scrap this project, but thankfully, thankfully, I was able to save it. We do have the front suspension out. We will be removing the rear suspension pretty dang soon now. This is a pretty sketchy setup, but in the meantime, guys, we have the front frame rail painted on this side and on this side as well so the goal is right now i want to get this entire engine bay sanded while the temperature of the outside is really 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 nice when i say temperature i mean weather it's a good time right now for some paint so i'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff sanded down get it fully prepped up start the painting process on this entire engine bay because later in the day when it's actually super hot then we can actually drop the rear subframe i don't really care we can do that whenever but guys if you also notice that, that i had barely any paint on there i literally just dabbed a little bit of orange paint on there um i really didn't really care the primary focus is in the wheel well but anyways let's go ahead and start prepping this engine because I'm so excited to see this portion right here become orange. Well guys, uh, time for the clear coat and uh, safety first. Yeah. 
And just like that, guys, we have the full NG Bay finally painted. I noticed that the cans that come with clear coat and paint in the same can um, wasn't as like bright and clear and gloss as the, the paint and the clear separately. So what I went ahead and did actually is actually go over this entire section with clear coat and this side of clear coat as well. So it all actually matches. And guys, this car looks so, so, so good right now. I mainly focus my paint cans because this took me five paint cans for this engine. I think actually no, six paint cans for this engine and you guys can see this section right here still has some darker spots in there and that really doesn't matter mainly because originally the paint back there wasn't perfect anyways and this all gets covered up by heat shield so all of this stuff right here other than like this section so this section forward all of this metal gets covered up by heat shields so i really didn't really care if it was absolutely perfect back there um as long as there's paint on that that's perfect as long as it's gloss it's perfect it at least shows that's the color that we're going with and then as far as this whole tower brace and everything, it looks absolutely perfect. This section right over here, we do need to sand down uh, this like over drip of clear. Once we do that, it's going to be literally perfect, guys. Like this thing came out way better than my expectations. I'm super happy with the results. I mean, guys, just check it out. It looks so good. Um, the VIN number, we do need to actually uh, scrape that out, but hopefully when everything actually dries up. But again, guys, very, very, very happy with the results. This is something that I didn't think you can do with just some cans. I mean, this is the highest quality can so far. Um, you guys can see how many cans I used over there. Um, just those cans, like in a bunch right there, what is that, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 25 bucks a piece. We're looking at $300 in cans to do pretty much this entire engine bay and the wheel arches. Now that's a lot of money, honestly, to do it yourself. But at the same time, the results, I'm very happy with it because of the quality of paint. Now, honestly, guys, um, after doing this and learning like the steps and the clear coat and the paint and everything, I think the next time we're going to paint something on our cars, we're going to end up getting battery died but uh <laughs> what i was trying to say um next time we're gonna try to get a compressor and a paint gun um now honestly with the results that i got that's pretty much like that's amazing considering that was cans like honestly like if someone looked at that engine bay that looks like it was painted professionally it really comes to show you guys that the proper paint can really come out with the best results but in terms of cost effectiveness um i think yeah next time what i was trying to say before my battery died was if we actually get a gallon and mix the hardener within it and just you know get the the, the compressor and everything that's like a 500 dollars setup i recently just spent over a grand for my welding setup that you guys saw um for the supra so i was like i don't want to spend a whole another grand right now like right right now on a painting setup and honestly i really want to see how cans would work and guys that is spectacular let me know down below what you guys think of the results but uh the goal for right now is to drop the rear subframe out of this car um just so we're gonna be 100 percent done with this car we could direct our focus towards the m3 so without further ado i disconnected pretty much everything we needed on this car um like the the e-brake lines, the, the brake lines, and everything else, the, the drive shaft, everything. Not to mention we disconnected all the cables for the sensors. So hypothetically, we should be good to go. Let's just go ahead and drop this stuff frame. Now that's what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And just like that, guys, that is gonna have to conclude the video. Um, Yeah, we've made so much progress on the E91. It's literally ready to start taking apart the E90 M3 in the next video. So if you guys are excited for that, make sure to smash that like button. If you guys are excited to see Mocarita over here, <laughs> Relax, girl. Make sure you let me know down below, guys. Did we go with the right color? I think we went the absolute best color, but let me know down below, guys, what you guys think. But without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.